Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 is the all-new platform fighter starring some of Nickelodeon's most popular characters. As a follow-up to the first game, it expands on nearly everything. New mechanics, new modes, new characters, and yes, all new costumes too. While the first game left a lot to be desired in the costume department, All-Star Brawl 2 really brings their A-game, giving characters some outstanding costumes with references to their series. And so, I'm excited to have partnered with Game Mill Entertainment to bring you Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2's costume origins. So, let's dive into the sequel and talk about their costumes. First up is SpongeBob SquarePants, because who else could we start off with? Sponge's first costume is none other than Mermaid Man, from his favorite superhero duo, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. This version of the costume comes from the episode Mermaid Pants, where SpongeBob and Patrick dress up and play as the superhero duo. He's looked like this in a comic as well, but that version notably has giant ears, while the costume in the game, as well as the episode, does not. Next is a returning costume from the first game, Smitty Werbin Jaegerman Jensen's hat. This comes from the episode One Crab's Trash, where Mr. Krabs sells Spongebob a seemingly worthless soda drinking hat before finding out it's incredibly valuable. The third costume is incredibly iconic, Spongebob's Krusty Krab Hat. This appeared in the very first episode of the show, Help Wanted, where Spongebob applies to work at the Krusty Krab, and he can be seen wearing this hat throughout the entire series to this very day. Finally, Spongebob is one of the few base launch characters to have a fifth costume, serving as a pre-order bonus. This costume dresses him up as the Quickster, his superhero alter ego that he takes on during the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5. The core cast all gain superpowers in this episode, and Spongebob's power is super speed. Next up, we have Spongebob's best buddy, Patrick Star. Patrick's first color is a basic palette swap, giving him blue shorts with white flowers. This could possibly be based on a couple of things. First is a t-shirt that features both Spongebob and Patrick in this same color scheme, and the other is this knockoff plush that features the same shorts. The next costume is Patrick Man, from the episode titled Patrick Man. In this episode, Patrick doesn't know what to do with his life, but after watching Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, he decides to become the defender of Bikini Bottom but doesn't actually stop any crimes. And then in a similar vein, we have him dressed up as Barnacle Boy. The origin of this is the same as SpongeBob's Mermaid Man getup. It first appeared in a comic from Nickelodeon Magazine, however the version in All-Star Brawl 2 comes from the Season 10 episode, Mermaid Pants. Patrick also gets a fifth costume, and like SpongeBob, it comes from the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5 episode. Patrick's superpower is elasticity, and he becomes the elastic waistband, donning this same superhero costume. Our next Spongebob character is Squidward Tentacles, Spongebob's grumpy neighbor and co-worker. His first outfit has him dressed up in his marching band attire from the amazing episode Band Geeks. Squidward tries to put together a last-minute marching band to play at a big sporting event, and it all goes horribly wrong until the very end. Next, Squidward Tortellini has an artist costume. While you may think this is from the episode Artist Unknown, the color scheme is different, and the episode this costume actually comes from is titled Out of the Picture. Squidward tries to sell his art at the Krusty Krab, but naturally, he fails. Mr. Krabs is told the art might be worth something if the artist is out of the picture, so Mr. Krabs spends the whole episode essentially trying to kill Squidward. Finally, Mr. Tennis Balls dresses up as a Viking. This is from the episode Bunny Hunt, where a bunny destroys Squidward's garden and he can be seen dressed up as a Viking chasing it. The final Spongebob character is Plankton, who pilots a giant mech. This mecha Plankton originally appeared in the 2015 Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water, during one of Plankton's many assaults on the Krusty Krab to get the secret formula. Next is a silver recolor, the color scheme of which comes from Plankton's robot decoy, also from Sponge Out of Water, though this decoy is a tiny robot rather than a giant one. After that, Plankton has a slightly different mech entirely. This mech comes from the one he pilots in Plankton's Robotic Revenge, a video game that was released in 2013. And the final one also comes from Plankton's Robotic Revenge. This mech is not piloted by Plankton, however, but instead by his cousin, Clem. Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius is up next, a new fighter in All-Star Brawl 2. Jimmy's first costume changes up his clothing considerably, giving him a yellow shirt, some shorts, and these wild blue goggles. This is a real deep cut, a 2001 Mattel action figure that was likely released as merchandise for the Jimmy Neutron movie. Next, Jimmy wears a karate gi with a white headband and belt. This is from a Jimmy Neutron video game, Jimmy Neutron Jet Fusion for PS2, GameCube, and Game Boy Advance. And Jimmy's final costume is Hulk Jimmy, his superhero alter ego. In the episode, The End Men, Jimmy and all of his friends get superpowers and all wear costumes, and this is Jimmy's, at least until he hulks out. 
Next up, let's talk about the Ninja Turtles. In the previous game, we had both Michelangelo and Leonardo, but this time around, the developers grabbed the other two. So let's first start with Raphael. Rather than anything more recent, the default appearance for Raphael is based on the Turtles' appearance in the 1987 TV series. His first costume is one that the Turtles had in the previous game, the black and white appearance. This is inspired by TMNT's origin as a comic that was printed in black and white, which many of the TMNT toys have also referenced. Everything is black and white, except for the eye masks. Raphael's next costume is a Rockstar appearance, which seems to be a fusion of a couple of ideas. Older TMNT toys put the Turtles in all kinds of appearances, and one of those was a rock style for Raph. There was also a concert tour for the Ninja Turtles, the Coming Out of Their Shells tour, which also gave them similar costumes. Michelangelo has a star across his mask, and Raphael also has this for the costume. All-Star Brawl 2 used more of an original color scheme, but these appearances were definitely the inspiration for this costume. His final costume is an incredibly subtle recolor. It doesn't really look like much has changed. This appears to be based on older toys made by Playmates back in the 1980s. The other Turtles all had more noticeable changes, but Raph basically had the same color scheme. The other Ninja Turtle this time around is Donatello, who also uses his design from the 1987 TV series. Don's first costume is Punker Don, an appearance that comes from a 1992 Playmates figure and also fits well with Raph's Rockstar costume. His next costume is also the black and white one, inspired by his original black and white comic. Finally, we have a more muted style. Like Raphael, this is also based on the old 80s Playmates figures, however Donatello actually has a more noticeable change. Next, we have April O'Neil, the human ally to the Ninja Turtles. Like Raph and Donnie, April's design in All-Star Brawl is based on her appearance from the 1987 TV series, in her iconic yellow jumpsuit and red hair. Her first color scheme is a mostly green one with yellow accents, which comes from a toy, the 1993 Channel 6 news van playset featuring April. Next, she has a blue jumpsuit, which is based on her original appearance. Like I said, the first TMNT strips were all in black and white, but they were later colorized and compiled into a book, and April was given a blue jumpsuit. Finally, she has another yellow jumpsuit, but this one has purple accents all over the suit. This comes from April's 1992 Playmates figure, where she has this exact same accent color. Now let's take a brief pause because I want to tell you all about some of the awesome new features of Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. The dev team has been hard at work revamping the gameplay, and there are a ton of new mechanics and abilities that you can utilize. The all-new slime meter brings with it several new mechanics. You can enhance moves by spending a bar, giving them all new properties, or making them stronger. You can also slime cancel moves, which allows you to chain attacks into other attacks, extending your combos. Or, a full slime meter can be spent on super abilities, a character's ultimate attack. The coolest thing in my opinion though is the all new campaign, a roguelike adventure that can play differently every single time. You first start out bare bones, with just base Spongebob. But as you progress, you unlock brand new brawlers and change up your equipment to give you new perks. Your damage and stocks carry over for each fight during a run, but you also get different abilities that also carry over. Some abilities you'll gain just for the current run, but others can be unlocked in the hub and equipped permanently. Like, I got this one perk that offers a random chance to drop a bomb every time you air dodge. So basically, I could just wave dash back and forth, and there was a chance a bomb would drop. It was really cool. Every single run is different, and each stop can offer a variety of different activities depending on the route you take. There are many games like popping balloons or defeating robots, offering you more resources depending on your performance. You can also fight a horde of enemies, or take on a mind control brawler in order to unlock them. And sometimes the game will be nice and let you shop for perks, or just give you a brief rest to heal up and gather yourself. As you progress, you'll fight stronger and stronger enemies, and the run can be made more difficult since your damage carries over. Each route ends with a different boss fight, like King Jellyfish or the Flying Dutchman, with the ultimate boss being Vlad Plasmius, the evil mastermind behind the campaign in the first place. Campaign mode, as well as the entirety of the game, features incredible voice acting, making both the battles and the cutscenes all the more immersive. I'm trying to tell you something, Sponge Boy. Hey, that's SpongeBob to you! Seeing these characters interact, and especially with fully voiced dialogue, is really just the icing on the cake that is this game. It's the sort of thing that you hope for with a giant crossover like this. As for other single-player stuff, there's a fun arcade mode that acts like a mini version of the campaign. You can also play the minigames on their own, going for the best time, or take on a boss rush mode. There really is something for everyone in this game, so I hope that you really sink your teeth into Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. Our next fighter is Avatar Aang, the last airbender. 
His standard appearance comes from his appearance in the first two books of the show, which are the traditional robes that are worn by young airbenders. His first costume comes from his appearance in Book 3, where his robes have a similar vibe, but are somewhat different as well. This is also the appearance he typically has in the comics, which take place after the end of the TV series. Next is basically just Aang shirtless, which he tends to be a lot in the series. This looks to be a combination of both his appearance while incognito in the Fire Nation in Book 3, and his look during his final fight with Ozai in the finale. Finally, what appears to be an original costume, which is basically just his first costume, but a little more orange. Outside of that, I really couldn't find anything. Next up, we have a brand new avatar fighter, Azula, the princess of the Fire Nation. In her default costume, Azula wears the clothing that she's most often seen in during her appearance in Book 3 of The Last Airbender. Her second outfit is an Earth Kingdom outfit. During the show, Azula wore this outfit when she infiltrated Ba Sing Se by pretending to be a Kyoshi warrior. You can't exactly wear Fire Nation clothes if you're pretending not to be from the Fire Nation. Third, we have the clothing that she wore during a flashback of Book 1 and during her actual appearances in Book 2. It's similar to her default appearance, being red to represent the Fire Nation, but it's different too. And finally, she has a sort of dress appearance from the episode The Beach. Azula, Zuko, Mai, and Tai Lee all go to a beach house on Ember Island and try to hang out with the locals. They get invited to a party, and this outfit is what Azula wears before the group destroys the home of the guy hosting the party. You know, as you do. Our next Avatar character is Korra, the Avatar after Aang in The Legend of Korra. Her default appearance is based on how she dresses in the first book of the show, wearing colors and clothing that represent the Water Tribe. Her second costume places her in the gear that she wears in Book 1 while participating in the Pro Bending League. She joined the Fire Ferrets team and played alongside Mako and Bolin as their waterbender. Korra's third costume features Earth Kingdom attire and much shorter hair, which comes from Book 4 of Korra. On a journey to rediscover herself after the events of the previous book, she changed into this outfit and cut her hair in order to get a truly fresh start. And lastly is her fourth costume, a sort of redesign of her first outfit. This is another of the main appearances she has in Book 4, and she keeps the shorter hair for this costume as well. Next up we have the dog and cat duo of Ren and Stimpy, the titular characters of the Ren and Stimpy show. Their first costume sees the duo painted up as Dalmatians and gives them fire hats. This is from the Season 1 episode Fire Dogs, where Ren and Stimpy disguise themselves as Dalmatians in order to get jobs at the firehouse. Next up, they have an outfit from the Season 2 episode Out West, where Ren and Stimpy are hired to steal Mr. Horse. Ren dresses as Three-Fingered Hork, while Stimpy is Stupid the Kid. Finally, they have Spaceman outfits, where they're known as Commander Hork and Cadet Stimpy. These outfits have made multiple appearances, three times in Season 1 and a final time in Season 4. And following that, we have Zim, an alien whose sole mission is to conquer planet Earth. And people on Tumblr love him. Zim's first costume is his spacesuit, which first appeared in the episode Battle of the Planets, where they discover Mars is actually a spaceship, and Zim plots to fly it into the Earth, destroying it. Next, Zim has his human child disguise. This is his most common disguise, used to blend in and not reveal himself as an alien, even though it really just consists of some hair and some colored contacts. Finally, Zim has a scientist outfit, more specifically, an engineer scientist. In issue 22 of the Invader Zim comics, Zim disguises himself as an engineer scientist of the Flamin' Hot Cheezos company in order to make a power plant explode and fill the atmosphere with Cheezo dust, depriving humans of all oxygen. Reptar also returns from the first game, still as the only rep from the Rugrats series, serving as a parody of Godzilla and other giant monsters found in media. His first alternate costume returns from the first game as well, Purple Reptar. In the show, Phil and Lil both have Reptar dolls. While one is green, the other is purple. Not much is known about this alternate, whether it's a totally different in-universe character or a different form Reptar can take on, we don't really know. His next costume is a new one, putting him in a top hat. This is kind of a deep cut costume. Rather than being from any of the Rugrats shows or movies, it comes from a previous video game, Rugrats The Search for Reptar for PlayStation 1. The ending scene has Reptar do a little jig while wearing this same top hat. And finally is a costume that turns Reptar into a robot. This is inspired by Robot Reptar, a giant robot made by Stu in Rugrats in Paris the movie. While the costume is inspired by this giant robot, it's also semi-original, as the design in All-Star Brawl 2 is built around the proportions of the other costumes in order to keep things consistent. Next up, it's everyone's favorite, Nigel Thornberry, one of the main characters of the Wild Thornberries. Nigel's first costume is not so much a costume, he just puts a hat on. This is your standard safari hat, though Nigel was actually seen wearing a quite similar hat to this in the opening of the Wild Thornberries movie. 
Next up, he has a costume that is similar to his default costume in color scheme, though features different clothes and a big 10 gallon hat. This comes from his climbing outfit clothing that he wore in the season 1 episode, Nigel Knows Best. Finally, he has his royal blues on. This is the outfit he wore in the season 5 episode, Sir Nigel, where he returns home to Scotland before being knighted by the Queen of England. New to Nick All-Star Brawl 2 is Arnold's grandma, Grandma Gertie. You honestly never know what you're gonna get with her, and this is also evident in her costumes. Her first costume features a blue dress instead of a green one and a chef's hat. This was how she appeared in the episode Field Trip, which was actually her first appearance in the entire series, so we can assume that this was just an early design before they ended up on her green dress. Her next costume is also from Field Trip, where she has a burglar outfit. Later on in the episode, she and Arnold break into the aquarium in order to set a captured tortoise free, and this is what she chose to wear. Finally, we have her in a karate outfit. This comes from the season 1 episode, Mugged. Arnold is mugged while on the street, and Grandma Gertie, a black belt, teaches him martial arts in order to help him defend himself in the future. The other Hey Arnold rep in All-Star Brawl 2 is Gerald Johansson, Arnold's best friend, rocking his red 33 jersey in his default costume, the standard appearance that he largely takes on during the show. Gerald's first alternate costume gives him pajamas, complete with slippers and a gigantic nightcap. These are similar to the pajamas that Gerald wears throughout the show, however these are yellow instead of the usual red, and I don't really know why. Next up is Gerald in a basketball jersey, also sporting his iconic number 33. This comes from the episode Bench Warmers, where the coach on the basketball team wants everyone to exclusively pass the ball to his son. And finally, we have a King Gerald costume, which is based on the episode Gerald's Game. Gerald becomes obsessed with the King's Game and becomes the King, letting it go to his head, even going so far as dressing in this costume while playing. Next up, we have the ghostly superhero himself, Danny Phantom. Danny's default appearance is based on his standard ghost form, featuring his snow white hair and glowing green eyes. Also, I've heard reports that he can walk through walls, disappear, and fly. His first costume gives him some futuristic looking armor and a heads up display visor. This comes from the episode of the show Teacher of the Year, where Danny, Tucker, and Sam play the video game Doomed. Danny uses his ghost powers to go into the computer and his player avatar is updated with this exact appearance. His following costume is exactly the same as his first, but with the colors completely inverted. This comes from the intro, and later an actual episode, where he goes into the ghost portal to investigate it. Turning it on, everything about him inverts and this is when he gets his ghost powers. Finally, we have young Dark Danny, from the TV special The Ultimate Enemy. Danny has shown a potential future where he becomes evil, splicing the ghost half out of his nemesis, Vlad Plasmius, and merging his ghost half with it to become the truly evil Dark Danny. New from the Danny Phantom series, we have Ember McLean, the ghostly rock star who first debuted in the episode Fanning the Flames. Her first costume puts her into a pirate outfit, which comes from her appearance in the season 2 episode Pirate Radio, where she teams up with the pirate ghost Youngblood to kidnap the adults of Amity Park. Following that, she has a red color swap, which is likely based on her red music note setting found on her guitar. And likewise, she has a green color swap, which is also from her guitar, based off of the green skull setting. Next up is the wallaby with the modern life, Rocco Rama, sporting his standard look throughout most of the series. Rocco's first costume simply gives him a hat. This is the same hat that's seen in the intro to the show, when this giant clock for some reason slams it onto his head. His second costume is a cowboy hat and bandana, which is an appearance he takes on when visiting his uncle's ranch in the 10th episode of season 1, The Good, The Bad, and The Wallaby. And finally, Rocco becomes French, wearing a red and white striped shirt and a beret, based on his appearance while visiting France in season 3, episode 7, I See London, I See France. Next up, we have the cat who loves lasagna and hates Mondays, Garfield. Garfield's first costume puts him in a blue hoodie with his own face on it, which is a crazy deep cut, coming from this vintage plush by Dakin. It doesn't have the exact logo on it, but it definitely has the spirit. Next, Garfield has a checkered bandana, which comes from the Garfield comic strip that was released on August 25th, 1985. And lastly, he has a pirate outfit, which comes from Garfield's Halloween Adventure, a TV special that aired on October 30th, 1985, where both Garfield and Odie dress up as pirates. Our next fighter is Jenny Wakeman, also known as XJ9 from My Life as a Teenage Robot. 
Jenny's first costume gives her a hot rod paint job. This comes from the episode The Great Unwashed, where she goes to a garage to get fixed up to look nice for a party. Her second costume keeps her blue color scheme, but gives her a dress, a ponytail, and a little bow in her metallic hair. This is from the season 2 episode Dancing With My Shell, where Jenny goes to the prom. While the majority of this appearance shows Jenny as pink, the costume in the game comes from earlier in the episode where she's learning how to dance. Lastly, she has a brown appearance that comes from the episode The Armageddroid. I'm not sure if this is meant to be rust or just indicate that she's been badly damaged, but either way, it's a result of her being defeated by the Armageddroid. The one and only El Tigre is up next, from El Tigre, The Adventures of Manny Rivera. His first alternate costume sees him wear a cape, which belonged to the original El Tigre. His second alternate costume has him wear both Puma Loco's Golden Sobrero of Chaos and White Pantera's Bronze Boots of Truth, from the episode The Good, The Bad, and The Tigre. His final costume has him wear the sentient mustache Raul, the world's greatest mustache. Lucy Loud from The Loud House is up next, this time without her brother Lincoln. Lucy's first costume gives her a purple turban with a small crystal on it. In this appearance, she's known as Madame Lucy, which she naturally wears when telling fortunes. Next is her superhero cosplay, where she dresses up as her superhero form, the Eight of Spades, which appeared in several episodes. Lastly, she wears a bat helmet, which she wears while riding her scooter in the episode Head Poet's Anxiety. And closing us out are the Angry Beavers, Daggett and Norbert. Being a cool tag character, all of their costumes are designed to match each other. First are their pajamas as they appeared in the episode Up All Night. However, for some reason, Norb's pajamas are missing the giant N on the shirt. Next are their beach shirts. Norb has a nice pink shirt with triangles, while Dag has blue with flowers. This was seen in Beach Beavers A Go Go, the fifth episode of season one. And finally, the two wear matching spacesuits from the 8th episode of Season 1, Mission to the Big Hot Thingy, where the two hilariously try to fly a spaceship to the sun. And that does it for all of the costumes that are currently in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. Like I said, they really upped their game this time, and with new characters confirmed to be on the way, we'll definitely be revisiting the series at a later date. A huge thank you to Game Mill for sponsoring this video. Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 is available now on Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam. So make sure you click that link down in the description to check it out today. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure that you be good to one another, and I'll see you next time.